In this video, we're going to explore some of the more commonly found functional groups in organic chemistry. We will be looking at some of the properties of these groups and also how we name these types of compounds. The first types of groups we're going to look at are alcohols and ethers. These are compounds that are in some way derived from water. Recall that water has a chemical formula H2O, and if we take a look at the structure of water, recall that we find an oxygen with those two hydrogens coming off either side. In an alcohol, one of these hydrogens will be replaced by what we call an R group. An R group just means that that is some sort of carbon containing structure. Could be absolutely anything. And so the key here to note is that an alcohol consists of a carbon structure with then an OH group coming off some region of the molecule. In an ether, both of the hydrogens are replaced by some sort of carbon-containing compound. And so we see here that an ether will be some sort of carbon group with a carbon connected to an oxygen, and then on the other side of the oxygen is another R group of some other sort of carbon chain. In both cases, the molecule will have the same bent shape that water has around the oxygen atom. Note that when we're thinking about intermolecular forces, only alcohols will be capable of forming hydrogen bonding since they have an oxygen directly bonded to a hydrogen. Ethers will not be able to form hydrogen bonds since they consist of oxygen bonded to carbon atoms rather than oxygen bonded to hydrogen. We break alcohols up into three main groups, primary, secondary, and tertiary. In each case, what we want to look at is the carbon atom that is bonded to the oxygen. In the case of a primary alcohol, that carbon will have one other carbon group coming off it, some sort of carbon chain, and two hydrogens. And so that carbon has one other carbon attached. In the case of a secondary alcohol, that carbon has two different R groups, some sort of carbon chains with one hydrogen. And finally, a tertiary alcohol does not have any hydrogens attached to that carbon, but rather we have three different R groups. When we're naming alcohols, we'll see that our basic naming conventions are the same as they were when we were naming hydrocarbons. First, we're going to assign our root based on our longest continual carbon chain. We will then assign our ending, and in this case, our ending is going to be OL which is our ending for alcohols. We also need to identify where the alcohol is attached. In this case, it's attached to our second carbon. And if there are any different alkyl substituents on the main chain, we will assign prefixes accordingly, just as we did with our branched chain hydrocarbons. And so we can see in this case that our main chain is six carbons long, giving us the root hexan, an, because they are all single bonds. Our alcohol is attached at our second carbon, giving us a name, hexan to all. We find alcohols everywhere in nature and in biochemistry. Alcohols with two OH groups are referred to as diols, such as hexa-2,3-diol. Alcohols with three hydroxyl groups are called triols, such as hexa-2,3,4-triol. Let's look at a few examples. In our first example, our main carbon chain is one, two, three, four carbons long. And so we are going to have the root B-U-T-A-N, butan. Our alcohol is attached to our first carbon, 
And so we get butan 1, all. In our second example, our main carbon chain is still one, two, three, four carbons long. However, our alcohol is now attached to our second carbon. And therefore, our name becomes butan 2 all. In our last example, again, we're going to look for our longest carbon chain. Our longest carbon chain which contains our alcohol is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons long. And so our root is going to be heptan. Our alcohol is attached to one, two, three, our third carbon. So heptan three all. However, we now have a substituent which we have to worry about. Our substituent is two carbons long, giving it the name ethyl, and it is attached to the one, two, three, fourth carbon. And so the final name for this entire molecule is going to be four ethyl heptan three. Oh. Now let's take a look at ethers. Ethers we name as if the ether group were a substituent from an alkane. Ethers are very unreactive, and so they're quite often used as solvents in organic reactions. If you walk over to the organic lab in our science wing, you will see diethyl ether in nearly every hood. Ethers have also been used as anesthetics since the 1800s. When we're naming ethers, we're going to assign our root, just as we've assigned roots for all other types of compounds, based on our longest carbon chain. We'll assign our ending, based on if the carbon chain is an alkane, alkene, or alkyne. And then we will assign our prefix, which is going to be our ether. And so we can see in this example here, our longest carbon chain is one, two, three carbons long. It's an alkane. And so we have propane. Now finally, when we go to name our ether substituent, coming off the oxygen on the other side is only one carbon long. And so therefore, that gets the prefix meth for one carbon, and oxy indicating that it is an ether. So we have meth right here with one carbon, and oxy indicating that it's an oxygen in an ether for a final name of methoxypropane. If the main chain does have three or more carbons, we also must assign a locator number indicating the location of that alkoxy substituent. In this example here, we have a carbon chain that is one, two, three, four carbons long. It's an alkane, and so it's, we have butane. Our ether substituent consists of one, two carbons, making it an ethoxy substituent, but we can see here that ethoxy substituent is coming off the one, two, our second carbon. Therefore, we have the name two, ethoxy butane. And so let's look at some examples. In our first example, our carbon chain is one, two, three carbons long. And so our root is going to be propane. And then we look to our ether substituent, which consists of one, two carbons. And so this will be an ethoxy substituent. And finally, we look at our numbering, and we see that our ethoxy substituent is coming off our first carbon. 
leading us to a final name of this compound of 1 ethoxy propane. In our second example, we have carbon chains of 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3 coming off either side of our oxygen. And so it doesn't matter which, we're just going to pick one of these to be our main chain and one of these to be our substituent. In either case, our main chain is going to be propane. And our substituent then is going to be propoxy. And either way that we choose to go with this, that propoxy group would be coming off of the first carbon, giving us a final name of 1 propoxy propane. Let's look at our last example. Again, we're going to identify our longest carbon chain, which will be right here with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six carbons, making our root for this compound hexane. Then we look to our ether substituent, and we see that coming off that oxygen, we have one, two carbons, making it an ethoxy substituent. But now we need to look at our numbering. If we number from this direction, we get one, two, three, four, our substituent on the fourth carbon. Coming from this direction, our substituent is on one, two, three. And so we're going to start our numbering from this carbon here, giving our substituent a number of three, and making our final name of this molecule three ethoxy hexane. The last type of molecule we're going to look at in this video are amines. Amines are compounds which we can perceive as being derived from ammonia, NH3, and divided into three basic groups. So if we recall our Lewis structure of NH3, we'll have a nitrogen with three different hydrogens on it and one lone pair. In a primary amine, one of these hydrogens is removed and is then replaced with an R group. In a secondary amine, two hydrogens are removed and replaced with R groups. And finally, in a tertiary amine, all three hydrogens are removed and we have no hydrogens attached to the nitrogen, but rather we have three different R groups. Since amines are derived from ammonia, they will all have the same basic tetrahedral electron domain geometry with a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. Primary and secondary amines will be able to form hydrogen bonds since they do have a nitrogen directly bonded to a hydrogen. The naming of our amines will again take the same basic approach as all other compounds, with a couple of small caveats in here now. But again, we're going to look for our longest main carbon chain, which will give us our root. We're going to assign our ending. In this case, our ending will be amine. We're going to use a locator number to indicate which carbon along our main chain has the amine attached to it. And then we will also assign any prefixes for any substituents, including any substituents coming off of the nitrogen. We'll get into de a little bit more detail of that in just a couple minutes. Let's take a look at some examples. In the top two examples, we see primary amines, in which there is only one carbon group coming off of our nitrogen atom and two hydrogens. In our first one, we have one, two, three, four carbons, 
making our root for this compound, butane, because they're all single bonds, we see that our amine, our nitrogen, is attached to our first carbon. And so we're going to get butane 1 amine. In our second example, we have a carbon chain of 1, 2, 3, 4. And so our root is pentan. But we can see that our amine group is attached to the second carbon, 1, 2 giving us a final name of pentane 2 amine. In our middle examples, we find secondary amines, in which we have two carbon groups attached to our nitrogen and only one hydrogen. And so again, we're going to identify our longest continual carbon chain. In this example, we have one, two, three, four carbons in our longest chain giving us, again, butane for our root. Our amine is attached to our first carbon, so it's, again, a but one amine, just as above. However, now we have to identify this group here, this substituent, which is also attached to the nitrogen. We can see that that group consists of two carbons, making it an ethyl substituent. But we have to identify that that ethyl substituent is attached to the nitrogen and not another substituent somewhere on the carbon chain. And so we do that with the letter N. N ethyl butan 1 amine. Again, that N indicates that that ethyl group is attached to the nitrogen. In our next example, we see that once again, just as in the one right above, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And so we're going to have pentan 2 amine, since our nitrogen is attached to our second carbon. But now again, we have that same ethyl group also attached to our nitrogen. And so we're going to name this one N ethyl pentan 2 amine. In our last two examples, we have tertiary amines, which now have three carbon groups coming off our nitrogen. And so we're going to identify our longest group, one, two, three, four carbons attached to our amine, and they're attached to the amine from the first carbon. So once again in this one, we have butan 1 amine, but now we're going to identify two substituents. We have a methyl and an ethyl substituent. And so therefore, we will have a f our names of our substituents as N-ethyl and methyl for a final name of N-ethyl and methyl butan 1 amine. And in our last example, we can see that we once again have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons in our main chain. Our amine is attached to our second carbon, so we have pentan 2 amine. And we once again have that same ethyl and methyl substituent coming off of our nitrogen, leading us to a final name for this compound of N-ethyl N-methyl pentan 2 amine. See the mother now go ahead and try these examples on your own. Stop the video now, try to answer all of these, and then restart the video to check your answers. And so practice these by stopping the video now. That group, 
here are all of the answers. If you got some of them wrong, go back and try to see where your errors occurred. If you need additional help, be sure to come see me or investigate some other resources. I hope this video on alcohols, ethers, and amines has been helpful.